Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna begin creating our units. So first of all, we want to go down to our content drawer and we want to go to our content folder where we have our level and our other blueprints that have already been created. And what we want to do is right click, go blueprint class, and we want to select the character blueprint, okay? And I am gonna call this one unit. Now this is gonna be the base blueprint for all of our different units, both the player and the enemy. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend from that for the player units and extend for that for the enemy units, okay? So if you do want certain logic such as AI for our enemies, uh, because our enemies are going to be able to attack on their own when a player gets within range, uh, but we don't want our players to do that, so we are going to basically have a separate player and a separate enemy blueprint, okay? Um, but this unit blueprint is basically going to be the parent class for both of those. So all of the similar logic, such as being able to move to a location, uh, move to a target, is going to be shared between them inside of this blueprint here. Okay, and we'll get a better understanding of how that works later on once we start setting up the others. But for now, let's just open up this unit blueprint by double clicking on it. And we can then dock it in like so, just to make it a bit neater. Now, the first thing we want to do is give ourselves a 3D model because right now we have no visual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the content drawer. I'm going to go to our models folder and I'm just going to drag in the Bishop 3D model under the unit here. Okay, we can select that model. And what we want to do is we basically want to drag it down so that it is sitting at the bottom of this uh, capsule right here. And this capsule is basically um, defining the bounds of our unit. Now, let's actually uh, disable the grid snapping here so we can move it up a tiny bit just so it fits correctly. There we go. And let's also give it a material. Now, to give it a material, we can go over to our details panel, go down to the materials, and let's give this one unit, uh, I'll give it unit underscore one, which is just a blue one like so. And there we go. So that is our 3D model, pretty much all set up. Now what we need to do is go over to the event graph where we are going to be spending uh, most of our time setting up the various different pieces of logic for our unit. Now inside of this unit blueprint, we are gonna be making a bunch of different things. First of all, we're gonna have it so that this unit can move to a target. It can also move to a position in the world. For example, when we right click on the ground, our player is gonna to move to that position. When we right click on an enemy, we want it to move and attack that enemy. We're also going to have logic that works um, for attacking a target when we get within range and also for taking damage. So let's start simple and just get our uh, unit moving. So first things first, we need to create a variable here which is actually going to determine the position we want to move to. So I'm going to create a new variable down here. I'm going to call this one target position. Over in the details panel, we can change the variable type from a boolean over to a vector, which has an x, y, and z uh, coordinate that we are going to move towards. We can click compile to save all those changes. And then over inside of begin play, what we want to do is initially we want to set our target position to be our current location. And that is because we don't want our target, we don't want our unit, I mean, to start moving over to 000 at the start of the game we want them to stand still. So we're gonna set their target position to basically be their existing one. So from begin play, I'm gonna drag out and go set target position. And the target position is basically just going to be get nav agent location, okay? So that's gonna get the location of our AI agent. And an agent is basically um, an entity that utilizes a nav mesh. So it's basically gonna get our current location on the nav mesh. Now, the actor begin overlap node, which, de uh, which detects collisions, we don't really need that, so we can actually go ahead and delete it like so. But the event tick, we definitely will need. Now, with event tick, what we want to do is we basically want to be moving towards our target position at all times, for now though, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag out from event tick here with the control, and I'm gonna drag this into a node called AI move to, okay? This one right here, AI move to. And this node right here, basically we give it some information and it is gonna automatically calculate a path and move us towards our target location. 
So what information do we need to give it? Give it. Well, first of all, we need to give it the pawn or the object that we want to move, which is going to be our self. So we can just right click and look for the self node right here, get a reference to self and drag that into the pawn. Now we also need a destination. And of course, that destination is going to be our target position. So we can drag in target position, go get target position and connect that up like so. Okay. And pretty much that is all we need to do. So now if we compile this, if we go back to our game level, we can actually go to our content draw, go back to content, drag in a unit here. There we go. They're on the ground. And if we press play, you'll see that nothing happens because we initially set their target position to be their existing one. But what happens if we don't do that? What if we go to unit? What if we right click on the begin play node and just go over to where it says break node links that will disconnect it. If we click compile, if we go back to game level and we move our player over here, for example, and we press play, what you'll see is our character now moves over or it's trying to move over to the zero zero coordinate, which is pretty much inside of this cube right here. Okay. So we can move it over down below here. So there is an obstacle in the way. And as you can see, it moves around this obstacle towards the target. Now you may think it is moving a bit fast and it kind of is. So what we can do is go over to our unit here and select our character movement component. And what we want to do here is just change the move speed. So if we go down to where it says max walk speed, we can change that to, let's just say 300. So now if we compile that, go to our game level, press play, you'll see that we move at a much slower speed and we can see the AI navigation a bit easier. But yeah, that is basically how we can navigate around obstacles using the AI move to node. Now I'm going to reconnect the begin play to that set target position because we do want to actually have our target position set to whatever we are right now by default. And in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at making it so that we can actually tell our player where to move. Okay. We're going to be able to select our player with left mouse and right click on the ground to move to a position. Okay. So we're going to get that RTS movement and interaction set up. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to get our player controller set up and working so we can actually start selecting our units and moving them around. And we are first of all going to actually create another unit blueprint. Okay. And that is going to be our player unit because this unit right here, this unit blueprint, we aren't going to ever be using it. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete our unit that exists in our world right now, because we're never going to drag this unit blueprint into our world. Rather, we are going to create two other blueprints, a player unit and an enemy blueprint. And those are both going to inherit, or they're both going to be, um, a child class of this unit blueprint. Okay. So it's basically um, we want the enemy and the player to both have the same characteristics and the same logic as each other, but they're going to differ in certain ways that we do want to give themselves different behaviors, such as the enemy is going to have automatic AI and the player is going to have the ability to be selected. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to create a new blueprint class, and this is going to be of, and we need to pick a parent class. Now we want to go all classes because we want to search for our unit right here. And this unit is going to be our parent class. And I'm going to call this one player unit. Now what happens if I open this up, you'll see that we have the player Bishop right here. We have everything set up just as it is over in unit. Yet if we go to event graph, you'll see that our begin play connects this thing called parent begin play and parent begin play is basically what this code here or this logic over in unit that we are setting up here. Okay. Because everything inside of player unit is sort of overriding or inheriting from unit that stuff already exists and any changes we make to the unit blueprint those changes get applied to our player unit as well okay and then what we can do is just attach on extra uh, logic extra gameplay behaviors to our player unit here that are more player centric and if we create the enemy blueprint that's going to be more enemy centric with the ai okay and of course we'll get into this uh, a bit later on on the specifics, but for now, just know that player, bl player unit 
is basically inheriting everything from this unit blueprint right here with the ability to add on its own extra unique properties. So now what we want to do is open up our RTS player controller blueprint right here. And this is going to be where we are detecting all of our mouse clicks and keeping track of which units we have currently selected. Okay. So inside of the player controller, what we want to do is go over to our event graph here and we want to create ourselves a new variable. And this variable is going to be called selected unit. Okay. And the variable type is not going to be boolean or vector, rather it is going to be of type player unit, like so. We can compile that to save those settings. And now what we need to do is we need a way of basically determining when we click on a player unit. So first things first, in begin play, we want to connect this over into a show mouse cursor node and enable that because we do want our mouse cursor enabled by default. We then want to delete event tick since we won't be needing that. And instead we want to create a left mouse button node. And this left mouse button node is gonna basically um, execute once the left mouse button is pressed or released. Now, what we want to do is we want to um, basically determine if we are clicking on a player unit when we select with the left mouse button. So how do we do that? Well, we need to use a raycast, okay, or a hit result. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a node called get hit result under cursor uh, by channel. And this node right here, basically it is going to shoot a laser beam from our mouse cursor to whatever we are pointing. And it is then going to return to us that information uh, whenever it hits something. Now from hit result, we want to bring this over into a break hit result node right here. You can then pop that open to see all of the different outputs we can choose from. Now, the thing we want to check to see is the hit actor. And we want to know if whatever actor we hit with our mouse cursor is a player unit. So we can drag that out like so. And we are going to put this into a cast to player unit node. Now, a cast to node, it basically takes in an object as an input and it basically determines if this object is of type player unit. If it is, this control flow executes, otherwise cast failed executes. So basically, this is only going to be true if the object we are clicking on is a player unit. So let's connect this up with the pressed input like so. And then from cast, if it is indeed a player unit, then what we want to do is we want to basically go set selected unit and go as player unit in like so. So now when we left click on a player unit, it is going to set it as our selected unit. Now, how do we get that unit to actually begin moving around once we have it selected? Well, for that, we are gonna create another event node called right mouse button. And right mouse button, this gets ex executed when of course we click on our right mouse button. And what we want to do with this is we basically, uh, to start off with, want to see, first of all, do we have a uh, selected unit? And if we do have a selected unit, then we want to move it to whatever location we have hit. So what we can do here is actually just to save some typing, I'm going to select our get hit result um, under cursor, hold down control and select the other node here. I'm going to copy that and paste it down here. Okay, just because we don't have to worry about creating those nodes again. Um, and instead of the hit actor, we want to get the location. Okay, but we don't want to get that just yet. Instead, what we want to do is we want to go out from pressed and we want to check to see if we have a selected unit because we don't want to try and move somewhere if we don't have a selected unit. So out from pressed, what we want to do is we want to check to see the is valid. Okay, is valid right here, little question mark icon. Basically, we give it a object and it determines if it exists or not. So right now, our selected unit, if we get it like so and plug it in, if it is has not been set, it is equal to what's known as null. Null basically means empty. And if it's empty, that means it'll be, it is not valid. Otherwise, if we have set the selected unit, it will be valid. Now, if it is valid, then we want to basically set its... Um, target position. 
And to do that, we're going to go over to our player unit right here. And actually not our player unit, we're going to go over to our unit. So our base unit, because this will could also be given to an enemy. And we are going to create a new function down here called move to. Okay, and the move to function is going to um, contain a input. So we can add an input right here. And it is going to be called to position. We want to make that of type vector. And basically what we want to do is set our target position to be this to position. So we just want to plug it in like so. And there we go. So basically when this move to function is called, we send over a position and it is going to set our unit's target position. Now we want to click compile, go back to our RTS player controller. And then what we want to do is we want to drag in our selected unit here, go get selected unit, drag that out. And we want to call the move to function like so. And we want to connect that to the is valid of the is valid node. And the two position is going to be the impact point. Okay, the point at which our mouse cursor has impacted probably the ground that we want to move to. Okay, so that is what we need to do in order to basically set it up for our um, unit to be selected initially. And then when we right click, we want to check to see if we have a unit selected. And if we do, we want to move it to wherever our mouse cursor has clicked on the ground. So now we can click compile. We can go back to our game level. We can then drag in a player unit here. And let's actually drag in another one as well to basically see if this selecting works. Click play. Okay, and now what we can do is we can click on our unit. So if I click on the left one right here, nothing really happens so far, but we will have a selection visual appear. And if I right click, you'll see that our unit is now moving to whatever position I am giving it, which is pretty cool. Now, if I select this other unit with left mouse, as you can see, I am now controlling it and the other one is staying still. So we can switch between our units here and move them around wherever we wish by clicking on them and then right clicking on the ground to basically navigate over to that location. So that's all working nicely right there. All right, so we got that all set up and ready to go. Now in the next lesson, I reckon we look at setting up some sort of enemy, okay? Because we need a way to actually begin attacking other units and then later on them having the ability to attack us. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.